wealthy investors would purchase huge tracts of forest land. They would hire armies of lumberjacks to go in and fell the trees. The difference was they would tip the trees into the rivers in shorter segments, say 16 foot logs, and they would choke the rivers with these floating logs. And so for a time, the practice of rafting and the practice of log floating, as they called it, competed uneasily on the rivers. But the problem was you couldn't sustain both. When the logs went into the river, that's the same moment in time uh, in the, when the spring floods came. That's the moment that the rafters needed to pilot their rafts to market and make money to support their families. But the industrialists went out in the end. They went out because their rights to use the river are upheld as a legitimate and uh, just means of uh, commercial livelihood. So the problem is that rafters are losing economic ground as log floaters are allowed to prevail. And unfortunately, another layer of this beyond the things that we've discussed is that many of these impoverished rafters who inhabited these hard scrabble upland farms, uh, they blamed Republicans for this industrialization of the highlands. Uh, and uh, they felt that their local democratic politicians were the champions of their rights, but that ultimately they were losing ground to larger Republican forces. So what I found is that ultimately when it comes to Pennsylvania's highlands, there's a unique story of a difficult region, a sparse region, a region uh, that even uh, today has very few people uh, and at that time was also sparsely populated. Uh, and so that region was motivated by its own set of economic concerns. Uh, one that we would not have understood uh, except if we didn't see echoes of this in the reports of the officials who knew the inner workings of these places. And so it was not unusual for them to move into this region uh, and assume that uh, the, the disaffected were those who come from the poorest classes. So these uh, upland farmers then were motivated by a set of factors that differed from people in other regions of Pennsylvania. So perhaps now would be a good opportunity for questions. Bob, thank you so much for shedding light on a facet of Civil War history that I think most of us knew very little about. Um, we do have some more questions from our audience, but I have a question. I'm, I'm curious, I know that your research included the Bloody Knox Massacre, for instance. Tell us a little bit about that. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, Bloody Knox, as it turns out, was not as bloody as you might imagine, but uh, it, it was something that was memorable in the history, especially of Clearfield County, uh, which is sort of the center of that Appalachian uh, region that I focused on. Uh, and it was essentially the one major armed clash between uh, soldiers uh, and draft resistors. Uh, and the way it occurred is that uh, in December of 1864, when the U.S. government sent its expedition into the mountains, uh, it, uh, it gained intelligence uh, from local people who were willing to rat out Democratic neighbors that there was a gang of toughs. And uh, if you'll remember from my uh, citation of the report, the U.S. government is expecting that there are literally hundreds of men armed, organized, and camped in a fort. Uh, and so they were ready for resistance. Uh, and they got word that uh, the most notorious individual, a man by the name of Tom Adams, who himself was a deserter from uh, a Pennsylvania regiment, uh, that he was the ringleader of uh, this region and that he was holding a party, a party that would be held before they scattered to the winds uh, and would never be seen again. And so the, the military sent a detachment immediately to arrest Tom Adams. Uh, and they caught them uh, in the middle of their party uh, in the evening uh, in December. Uh, and uh, well, Tom Adams wouldn't go quietly. Uh, he decided he would try to escape. Uh, and so uh, uh, the first thing he did was uh, he went to the second floor of his house uh, and shot one of the soldiers who was waiting outside from a second story window. But then he tried to jump down to the ground uh, and run for his life and was promptly shot by some of the soldiers who had surrounded the house already. So Bloody Knox was an event in which the ringleader of this gang of desperados uh, was murdered as he tried to flee. Uh, and of course, one of the members of the VRC, uh, the Veteran Reserve Corps, were also murdered in the process. So Bloody Knox involved two deaths. Uh, and so what I say about that is that it illustrates that some men uh, were willing to embrace violence uh, in opposition to the war, but that the levels in comparative terms is very mild. If of that 1,800 suspected men, uh, only one man offered 
violent resistance, then I'd say that uh, the conspiracy the Republicans had created was not quite uh, everything uh, that it was supposed to be. I'm curious, what has your research uncovered about women's involvement in dissent? The reality is, and I, I guess I should be sorry to say this, is that they were willing participants. Uh, in fact, uh, the reports of the marshals often said that women in their communities played very prominent roles uh, in all these various forms of uh, evasion and opposition. Now, we don't find instances, or at least I've not seen any, of women taking up guns uh, and shooting at marshals. But we do find instances uh, of women who are involved in the deception and the lying, encouraging family members uh, not to join the military. We even find examples of letters from home sent to soldiers in the army that do encourage them to desert. And uh, we even have instances at different points of the war where they send civilian clothing in bundles to essentially say, change into this and get out of there at first light. So, uh, so we do find women as active participants in this. But we should also say that uh, there were women on the opposite side of the equation that were staunch you know, supporters of the war and uh, of sending their uh, soldiers uh, into the military. So, uh, but we would be remiss to uh, ignore the fact that they were also part of opposition. Thanks again uh, for this interesting topic. I wonder if you could share with us a little bit about how these communities healed after the war. Ah, you know, that's a difficult question because uh, in the period after the war, a lot of people didn't talk about this. A lot of people wanted to put the war behind them. Uh, in fact, we know that a lot of people who were prominent Democrats during the war, who had opposed the war, uh, many of them destroyed their personal papers as an attempt to try to cover their uh, true feelings. Uh, it was deeply divisive in communities, and as you can imagine, peace did not heal that. Some communities still uh, harbor you know, these uh, inner grudges. Uh, but it is true also that now we see communities, not just in Pennsylvania, but also elsewhere, that they're beginning to commemorate and remember uh, their divided past. In Clearfield, for instance, they turned Bloody Knox into a commemorative site with a plaque uh, in a park-like setting. Uh, in Columbia County, not too far away, they also uh, commemorated those who had opposed the war and who were arrested. Uh, and so I think communities now, uh, this far removed from the emotion of the war, are in a better place where they can objectively look at this and understand that there are multiple perspectives. Bob, you talked in your presentation about conscientious objectors, and I'm wondering if you could help us connect the dots to more recent times, for instance, the Vietnam War. Uh, yes, well, uh, one of the things that I try to highlight in my work is that in many ways, uh, the experience of the Civil War is more akin to Vietnam than we might think. Now, at first blush, of course, it, they seem like dramatically different conflicts, and I don't want to be uh, over generalizing this because they are dramatically different wars in dramatically different settings. Uh, but the, th the thread that is common is that uh, opposition during the Civil War was quite widespread as it was during the, the Vietnam era. And not only was it widespread,